In this episode, we're going to discuss the difference between an earnout and a clawback in the sale of privately held business. What are they? How are they different? And why they're used. In addition, we're going to talk about the pros and the cons of each for both the buyer and the seller. So if you're thinking of selling or buying a closely held business, stick around because this episode's for you. As I go through this presentation, if you've got questions, please feel free to just drop me an email or put it in a comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you get something out of this episode, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel grow. Now with that, let's talk about earnouts and clawbacks. So, in all the transactions that uh, Bill and I are involved in, I'd say less than 10% of them have earnouts or a clawback embedded in the transaction. An earnout really is a base purchase price with an earnout over and above that, uh, that number over a certain number of years. And it's really tied to uh, a set of defined metrics that the business in the future has to meet. And that could be revenue, gross profit, net profit, or customer retention. A clawback is really a reduction in the purchase price based on the business not hitting a set of defined metrics in the future. And that can be pretty much the same metrics, either revenue, gross profits, net profit, customer retention, or customer concentration. Why are they used? Why would a buyer put into a transaction either an earnout or a clawback? Well, the number one reason is a little bit of deferring risk back in the transaction from the buyer to the seller. The second reason for doing is it kind of ties the seller back into the future performance of the company and you're going to get a, a seller that's going to actually try and help you achieve your future goals. Now they're each structured a little differently. Let's take the buyout for the exa first example. In a buyout, you've got a base price, which could be uh, you know, some senior debt, seller note, with a buyout for future performance over and above it. And usually that's a two, maybe a three year term, uh, things that you're looking for are either uh, revenue, gross margin, net profit, or customer retention or expansion. There could be other metrics involved, but this is a little bit of the, between this carrot and a stick, the carrot on trying to make sure that that business continues to move forward and uh, for that, and for the seller's help and maybe helping accomplish those goals, they'll get a, a you know, future payout or what we call a second bite of the apple. Uh, the other reason that a buyer may put this in a transaction is really around uh, incenting the, uh, the seller to take maybe a lower base purchase price. If you're a seller, you gotta be really careful here and we'll talk about why in a bit. In a clawback, this is really the stick portion of the carrot in the stick. And that is um, basically structuring a transaction where you've got a base purchase price. You may have uh, some senior debt, SBA, and then a seller note. And if certain metrics aren't met in the transaction over usually a shorter period of time, say anywhere from six months to a year, and they usually are around customer transactions uh, or retention, that purchase price gets reduced. So it really ties the uh, seller again into trying to transfer all of that business and revenue over to the buyer uh, over a one year period. And then they're kind of based on their own. Let's take a couple of examples from transactions that I've closed in the class last couple of years just to prove this point. 
This first example is of a pest control company that I sold three or four years ago. Now, the makeup of this company was that it had about 60% of reoccurring contract revenue. Now, that revenue or those contracts came due in or back to renewal in various increments, either three months, six months, or annual. Now, reoccurring revenue and especially contract reoccurring revenue has a higher value uh, in, the, in the sale of a business. So we were able to uh, agree to a, uh, both parties were happy with the, the purchase price. There was about a 60% down payment and then a seller note was structured for the remaining. But a portion of that seller note was tied to that customer retention rolling over, over a six uh, month and a one year basis. So at that six month period, they got a pay, portion of their seller note paid based on performance of those contracts, reoccurring or re-signing up for at least that next term. And at the end of the note, again, the annual contracts that were renewed went forward. So it tied the seller into making sure that the customers were moved successfully over to the new company. And based on the, the buyer a uh, great individual, ran a great company, and really worked well with the seller. The seller knew his customers. In a lot of cases, he'd had them for, you know, 5, 10, or 15 years, and was able to reassure his clients that the new owner was going to take care of them just as he'd had in the past. So it worked out great. Uh, but that's how you'd see a clawback structured in the sale of a business and why the buyer's transferring some of that risk back to the seller, um, but he's willing to pay for it if those metrics were hit. In this case, where they were. An example of an earnout is a wholesale company that I sold about six years ago. A great husband and wife team had built a just a super wholesale distributing uh, company here on the West Coast that. Uh, was involved with uh, national and international sales. Now, we put this business out and we had multiple offers. One of the offers included an earnout, and it was a blatant attempt, and it worked, uh, to incent the sellers into taking a harder look at that offer. Now, it also uh, had metrics tied to retaining their suppliers, which was uh, a really integral part of keeping that business going in its current format and at its current revenue. So when we got down to the basics uh, of evaluating both offers, the structures were fairly the same in that there was a fairly, say about 70% cash at closing with another 30% um, in a seller note. And then one of them had an earnout plus an employment contract uh, involved. In this case, the sellers chose the one with the earnout, uh, taking advantage of getting a second bite of the apple down the line. And it tied, again, the seller in, in this case, into a contract, employment contract for one year to actually move that business over in a nice, smooth transaction. So those are two examples, and both of them are really having the buyer transferring some of the risk back to the seller for the future financial performance of the business. Now, again, I don't see these very often, but when I do, there's a couple things that we wanna talk about as far as the seller's concerned on the risks of doing either. The biggest risk that I see involved in either an earnout or a clawback is the seller agreeing to uh, metrics that either they can't meet and or don't have control over. So let's talk about a buyout. In a buyout, um, we really only recommend basically two metrics, and that is uh, either revenue or gross profit. Once you go beyond that, the buyer can control the operating expenses of the company. And if you agree to either a net profit or an EBITDA uh, calculation for your earnout, you've really lost a lot of that control. So 
the other thing is around metrics might be customer retention. So make sure that if you're a seller that you're only agreeing to metrics that you can control and are easily uh, obtainable as far as accountability. Part of the difficulty is if you, the buyer and the seller, get sideways on trying to figure out what those numbers should be, the last thing you, don't, you want to do is hire a forensic accountant to go in and uh, work through the buyer's books in a hostile environment to try and prove how much money they owe you. So keep it simple, either revenue, gross profit, or if it's got something to do with customer retention, that's a fairly easy one to figure out. You'll either have the customer or you won't. So keep it high level and keep it simple. On a clawback, the same thing really is, uh, comes to fruition in that making sure that you keep those metrics as a seller realistic. For instance, let's go back to that uh, pest control company. Now, let's just assume they had 500 customers they were trying to transfer it would have been unrealistic to base the clawback on that seller note to 100% of those 500. This should be a percentage. I mean, most buyers are going to want and hope for 100% transfer of all of that revenue, but have got to understand that you know, that's probably not a realistic portion. So if you're 95%, that's probably good. But understanding and keeping it simple and realistic and easy to be accountable for uh, on, be, on part of the, uh, the seller. So both the clawback and the earnout for the seller, you've just got to be really smart about the metrics that you sign up for. Pros and cons for an earnout versus a clawback. Now let's talk about the buyer first on an earnout scenario. It's really what I would consider a win-win. Uh, offering a uh, earnout if you feel it's appropriate will tie the seller back into future financial performance of your company that you just bought. And again, depending upon how you structure it, uh, you know, could be an absolutely a no-brainer. You're for the seller, uh, it means that you might be able to get a second bite of the apple. Now, depending upon, you know, were you able to come to terms on what you thought was a fair purchase price for the transaction? And are you ready to retire and just want to walk down the road and, and uh, go play more golf or load up the RV and, and head out for, for uh, traveling? So really, you know, both parties have got to agree but I don't see a lot of downside for either party in an earnout, as long as the metrics are high level, well defined, and uh, really easy to uh, for both parties on an accounting basis. On a clawback, really this comes down to uh, for a buyer really transferring some of that risk right straight back to the seller. So it's beneficial for them. I really see this when there are two things involved. One, large amounts of customer concentration or you've got reoccurring revenue and customers that need to be transferred to the, uh, to the new owner. Those are the two biggest reasons for, for a clawback. With the customer concentration piece, um, you know, that is a real a deal. If you've got one customer that's 40% of your business and they stop doing business with the new client or the new buyer, you've got a real problem there for, for the buyer. If that can be taken care of and that relationship can be uh, transferred, then no harm, no foul, everybody gets paid and the business moves uh, right along. So for the seller, you've just got to accept that um, with the makeup of your business uh, as you go to market. And a good merger and acquisition advisor or broker is going to help you understand uh, what that transaction or that risk uh, is as you go to market. So I hope this helps with what an earnout versus a clawback is, a little bit of that stick and carrot in a transaction. I don't see them often, but again, 
when I do, just be really careful about the metrics that you agree to as a seller and as a buyer. So with that, I hope this finds you well and we'll see all of you in the next video.